Okay, back with another patch breakdown on the Behringer 2600. So I just got done watching an Alex Ball video and he's talking about making vocal sounds on subtractive synths, which is something I've done in the past, but I don't do that often because I don't know, it kind of falls into dubstep territory, which is not really my thing, but they're cool sounds, definitely. Um, so I don't think he showed, I just flipped through his video, but I don't think he showed on the 2600 how to patch it up. So I thought I'd have a go at it on the Behringer and this is what I come up with. So I got a MIDI keyboard off screen and I'll just play it quick. <laughs> So the patch is not too complicated. It's based around an oscillator going into a filter. That filter is being FM'd by another oscillator. And the output of the filter is going into a sample and hold. The sample and hold is being clocked at audio rate by another oscillator. And then the output of the sample and hold is being mixed in with the output of the filter. And then I'm doing some extra things here so if we just play the sound, I'll adjust a few things and we can see what's going on. So I have Aftertouch from a MIDI to CV converter going into the ring mod, which is acting as a VCA. And I'm using the sine wave output from VCO2 into the ring mod to FM the filter and the aftertouch is letting this through. So as I put pressure on the key, the modulation comes through to the filter. If we move oscillator 2's pitch, you'll hear what that does to not only the filter mod, but oscillator 2 is also the one that is clocking the sample and hold at audio rate to be used as a bit crusher. This is all a bit confusing. You should go watch Alex's video. He explains it pretty thoroughly. Um, so let's just hear this. So your pitch is pretty important for this. And also the FM level to the filter. On the 2600, there are these inverters hidden everywhere that you have to watch out for. So here, when I'm coming out of the sample and hold, I'm inverting the sample and hold output before I mix it into the VCA. If we take the, um, the uninverted sample and hold output, this is what it sounds like. So very um, cancelled. There's some cancellation going on because of the waveform being too similar to what is already going through. You hear the bass comes back. So to avoid this cancellation, we invert the output of the sample and hold. And that makes it come through a little more full. Yeah. 
The envelope, I'm doing a couple things with it. I'm sending it to another inverter to get a negative envelope, and then I'm sending that to oscillator two along with the normal regular envelope. So the regular envelope sounds like this. And the inverted one sounds like this. But by combining them, we can get this kind of shape. And then the last thing I'm doing is I'm sending the output of the VCA into the preamp for just a little bit of gain and mixing that into the output if we turn it up. It gets pretty distorted, so I'm just adding a little bit to thicken it up even more. Some other things that are going on here, there's keyboard tracking on the filter. If we get rid of it, it sounds more consistent as we go up the keyboard, but we don't want that. We want it to increase as we go up. Another thing that's going on here is I'm sending a little bit of oscillator mod from VCO1, which is the main VCO going into the filter, to VCO2, which is, like I said, modulating the filter and clocking the sample and hold. So if we get rid of that modulation, again, it's pretty subtle if we turn it up. And then for a little bit of extra high frequency, I'm mixing in oscillator three, which is synced to one. And that sounds like this. So that's pretty much the patch. I'll write it in the description. Sorry if this was hard to follow. Thanks to Alex for reminding me how cool these patches are. Um, and thank you for watching.